Hello, precious one. You're welcome. This is the Yeshua Atrix TV. I'm Prophet Ezekiel Mekisidik, the presiding minister of the Salvation Christian Church Worldwide. We're located right in Accra, Ghana. I want you to understand that God has a message for your life. God wants to bless you. He wants to change your life. He wants to establish you and your family by the power of His Word. This is the creative Word, the Word that created the heavens and the earth. In John 1 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, right now, have an encounter with God as it. Dive with me into the scriptures. I want you to sit back. Now, lock yourself on the seat because God has a message for you. On this Yeshua after the broadcast, I believe that God will speak to your soul, your spirit, and your body, and your life will never be the same because God wants His Word to change your life. Psalm 1 1, verse 11. The Bible says, Your Word have I hid in my heart. And I'm not sin against you. So it's time for you to hide God's word in your heart. If you will do that, God's word will help you not to sin against God. And your life will change forever. You know what? Your heart is your focal point of decision. The doorway to the soul, the human soul, is the heart. So if you allow God's word to enter your heart, then your heart will change. When your heart changes, it will change your character. When your character changes, it will affect your behavior. When your behavior is affected, your actions will change. When your actions are changed, it will affect your dreams and your visions. And I bet you, your destiny will be actualized to the glory of God. So sit down and let's dive with me into the Word of God. And I'm coming back to pray with you because I'm not true with you yet until God says, it is over with you and this devil will flee and then you will know that God's word has power to cast out the demons and to set the captives free and to position you where God says you belong. Okay, so right now you can also reach us right on the number shown in the screen. But I'm better. I'm coming back to pray with you. God is going to save your life. You are blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Opportunity you have given to your children to hear your word. We are here to receive from you. We pray that you will speak to every soul under the sound of my voice, that your word will bless our life and change our destiny. You will make us the kind of people you created us to be, because in you we live and live and have our being. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you have done great and awesome things in our life and in your church. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we give you glory, Lord. Amen. Amen. Today we are in 2 Corinthians. We are studying the whole book, so we are in chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. So we are studying from verse 1 to the last verse. Now let me read verse 1. As God's partners, we beg you not to reject this marvelous message of God's great kindness. For God says, at just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I've helped you. Hallelujah. Amen. So here he's talking about Paul himself is putting himself in God's partnership. He said that he is a partner with God. Partner with God means you are working hand in hand with God. That is the call of the ministry. Every man of God, every child of God, we are have a partnership with God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that we are Christians, we are called to walk on a vocation. A vocation is a lifestyle of education where you are trained to function. So we are trained to function as partners with God so that we will know how to minister the things of God and not our own life or our own things. Because God wants us to show the whole world that He is God and He is the Savior, the only true God who came to save human life. So He's telling the Corinthian church, He said, Our God's partners, we beg you not to reject this marvelous message. Can you imagine that He's begging them? He's beseeching them. He's not forcing them. We don't force people to listen to the word of God. We don't force people to obey God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why pastors, we need to do the work of preaching and teaching, preaching and teaching. It's, it's a matter of persuasion, convention, and uh, trying to, you know, reason with people with love and care from the scriptures, how that God loves them so they too must receive the message that God brought. That is the message of salvation. That's what Paul was trying to say. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. 
This message brings about God's grace. I want to read it from the King James Version because the King James Version gives us a clarity of the English. By the time we go here in this version so we can understand it better. He said, We then as workers together with him beseech you also that we receive not the grace of God in vain. So you see, grace was not mentioned in this version of the scripture. He said, marvelous message of God's great kindness. Here, grace is referred to as God's great kindness. That is the expression used for grace. Grace is kindness from God. Unmerited favor. God is doing you favor. That's kindness. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And that is grace. It's a message of God's grace. God came to, he came to favor us. There are so many things we don't deserve, but Jesus came to give us the grace. So this message is talking about the word of salvation, the word of God. It's a grace. It's by grace. We don't deserve it. We have sinned so much. We believe in sin. Satan has controlled our lives and that. He has destroyed so many of what we are, what we stand for, so much so that our lives were heading to a disaster. Then God came to give us grace, the grace of salvation. So if you reject the message, you have rejected the grace. If you reject the word of God, you reject your grace. If you want God's way, you need to receive the grace. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want the grace, you receive the word. The word gives you God's grace so that God can show you mercy. When you don't deserve the blessing, you just bless you. Well, there are some things you have not worked for, but God can decide to give it to you. Mm-hmm. That's the message. Verse 2. He said, For he said, I have had thee, we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I have had thee in a time accepted. In the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time, and behold, now is the day of salvation. So you know that God has his own accepted time for everybody. There are some people who think that their life has no meaning, or they are not blessed, or God doesn't love them, or God has not done anything for them. Or maybe yourself, you think that God has not loved you, God has not done anything for you yet. But there is an acceptable time. Amen. God is the God of time. And that you need to understand. Maybe somebody's time has come, the person is enjoying the blessings of the Lord. You are here to enjoy your own blessing. Yeah. In God's set time, the blessing will flow in your life. That's why you don't need to rush. You need to wait on God. Because it talks about God helping people in the day of salvation. He said, I have succored thee, I have helped thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So now is the day that God wants to help you. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Look at the New Living Translation. He said, For God says, At just the right time, I have helped you on the day of salvation. I helped you. Indeed, God is ready to help you right now. Today is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. So God helps people on a special day. He called it the day of salvation. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. I guess God can sit down and watch you suffer in pain, in agony, in troubles. Then he will reach out with his wife. Then he will see whether you will also call unto him for his salvation, for his grace, for his blessing. That is when he comes in. Hallelujah. Amen. When you come to a situation in life, a point in life, you realize that you cannot stand by yourself. You need His grace. You need His word. You need His life in you. That without Him, you can do nothing. Then you call upon Him in His acceptable time. That's why times you pray without answers. There are three ways God answers our prayers. Yes, no, later. So when you are praying some prayers that will be against your destiny, God will not answer that prayer. How should God answer a prayer for you that will bring distraction to your end, your future? You know that human beings don't have the capacity to see tomorrow. We only ask God for things according to what we are passing through today. But we don't know the future. But there are some things we think that if I have it, it will help me tomorrow. 
But you might not know that maybe that thing that you want might even destroy you tomorrow. So God can say no to some prayers. Even Jesus, God said no to him. How much more? At the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was praying. He said, God, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering pass away from me. What cup was he talking about? He was talking about the cross, the crucifixion, the death of the cross. He wanted it to pass from him. He doesn't, Jesus never wanted to die on the cross because it's a shameful death. Remember, they are going to disgrace you, naked you, nail you to the cross. And the Bible says anyone who is nailed to the cross is accursed. And that is what they wanted to do to Jesus. They wanted to make him accursed. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible tells us that he prayed so much that the sweat on his body was like blood. Yes. But still, God said no. In Matthew chapter 26, when Jesus was praying from verse 40 to verse 43, he tells God, he said, God, if this cup may not pass away from me, Unless I drink it, your will be done. He said, God, with you all things are possible. Let this cup pass away from me. But if this cup may not pass away, unless I drink it, your will be done. Because Jesus was so in the spirit that Judas Iscariot is bringing the soldiers to come and arrest him. And he can pray and scatter everything. When they come, he can even strike them with blindness. You can even change their mind or set confusion in them so they will kill each other. Mm -hmm. They will kill one another instead of coming to arrest him. But Jesus, God said no to that prayer. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When did God say yes to his prayer? On the, on the tomb. He died on the third day. Then God said yes. This is time for you to come out of the grave. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So God helps us, but he helps us on the acceptable time. Amen. That's what this verse is trying to tell us. On the day of I praise the Lord, I believe you're blessed with that word of God that you have. You know, there is power in the word. Isaiah chapter 55, verse number 10, 11. The Bible says, My word shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the purpose for which I send it and that which I preach. And I believe that God has sent his word in your life. And this word came to accomplish a purpose of deliverance, a purpose of healing, a purpose of salvation, a purpose of prosperity, and you name it. God has so many good stuff in his word for your life. And I believe it has started right now because now God's word has come to you. And that word has a capacity and ability to change your life and make you the kind of person you are. I want to pray with you because you need Jesus in your life. Maybe you've not given your life to Jesus. I want you to do so for the first time. Now I want you to just wherever you are, you raise your hand and say these words and pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. I receive you right now into my heart. I repent of my sins. Forgive me my sins and wash me with your blood. And receive me into your kingdom. Write my name in the book of life. I thank you, Jesus, for saving my life. Amen. If you have just prayed that prayer, I want to assure you that salvation has come into your heart. The Spirit of God has come into your heart. Now, do not hesitate to contact us on the number showing on your screen. You can call or WhatsApp. And I believe that God will bless your life. You can also call us with your prayer request, you know. You can call or WhatsApp the number. If you need directions, watch on the screen. you see all the ten on the screen. And when you call, you have more information about the Salvation Christian Church Worldwide, the Yashua Arctic Ministries, and this is the Yashua Arctic Brokers. I believe that next time you tune in here, God has more stuff for your life that will change your life forever. I bet you salvation is your portion. You are blessed. Praise God. Somebody.